Hey, thank you for stopping. If this is the type of content that you like, please go ahead and hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe, or don't do any of those. But anything would be uh, much appreciated. All right, this will be relatively a short video. What I wanted to kind of go through is I'll show the project, and this is part of a device I'm making for a larger project, hopefully down the road. But I wanted to kind of go through and showcase some of the benefits of building a PCB. Now, for my board, I use PCBWay.com. They're a very great company. Really quick turnaround. Uh, as far as prices, it's you know pretty par with the industry. But I've yet to have any issue. They do some great work. So this is the routing. Go ahead and throw. All right, on this board, we have a few options. This is utilizing ASP, A266. I have a motor driver. This is a buck converter. I have a couple of directional diodes, 12 volt barrel jack uh, DC input. Uh, the directional diodes are just to protect the whole circuit from uh, reverse polarity. The voltage regulators, it's taking the five volts that's coming off of the buck converter and dropping down to 3.3 3 for the 433 megahertz receiver. Uh, sorry, yeah, receiver. So well, that's what this this guy is. So we can use a 433 megahertz transmitter. We have a couple components here that's handling the output from the 433 megahertz receiver into the Wemos D1 Mini. We have two landing positions uh, right here, so we can utilize end stops. We can connect two motors up to this. Now we are limited to, to amperage wise. So if it's a smaller motor, we can uh, utilize two motors on this one. And then we have a trigger. Now, the reason for the trigger here is if we want to use an external um, board, say with a relay, a fingerprint, a fingerprint reader, or a keypad or something to that extent, we can trigger it that way, or we can use the 433 megahertz receiver. But also, so I have the ability to tie in two of these boards. Now, why would I want to tie two of these boards? Well, if I'm using a heavy draw motor and I can only connect one per board, I can go ahead and utilize two boards, two power sources, link these together via the trigger, and that way I can utilize the 433 megahertz transmitter on one of the boards to trigger both motors at the same time. And this is if I have a motor on both sides. So, and just to give you an example here, just utilizing this remote. And the way that I currently have this programmed is when I hold down the button, it'll turn one way. When I release it, it stops. When I hit it again, it will turn the other direction. When I let go, it will stop. Now, if I had end stops connected to this, basically, I'd have it where I'd hit the button once. It would turn one direction until the end stop is hit. Hit it again, it would reverse and go the other direction. And I want to take the time to thank today's sponsor, PCB. Right now is currently their ninth anniversary. They have quite a bit of savings on their website. Please, if you haven't used them before, it's a great opportunity to get a little savings and try it out for the first time for yourself. We have quite a bit of other services as well, ranging all the way from 3D printing, resin printing, all the way to CNC and injection molding. Once again, I use them for almost every project that I've done. It's a great time to go check them out. Until the end stop is hit. Hold it down, it's turning one direction, let go, stops. Hold it down, now it goes the other direction. Full stops. So, yeah, if this is something you'd like to see as far as the build process um, or the coding, please let me know. You know, once again, this is, in my opinion, a great example to showcase why building a PCB is very helpful um, and, al and almost needed. There's too many components in this uh, this design here. Too many components to not have a PCB. Please go ahead and leave a comment, a like. Go ahead, subscribe, anything would help this channel. Well, thank you for stopping and uh, have a wonderful day.